Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video on removing the starter off this 10 horse Briggs. And we're going to be cleaning the brushes in there and probably putting a new gear on it if it needs it. And the only reason I'm doing this is that it seems like the starter is dragging a little bit. And before you do this, if your engine's an overhead valve, it has a valve cover on the front of the motor. It, uh, it's probably the valves needing adjusted on your, your engine if it's overhead valve because uh, the valves work off of compression at least. It makes the engine easier to crank over. So always check the valves first and of course your battery too. This one ain't real bad, but I just thought I'd do it to make a video on it, you know. And, uh, one of the things I've been putting off for a while, and figure, well, I'll go ahead and do that and make a video on it. So I've had a few questions on how to do this. We'll go ahead and hook the jump start on here, and we'll crank it over to see uh, see how it cranks. We kind of got a before and after of it. All right, let's see how this thing cranks. Now, I'm not trying to start it. It shouldn't even fire. There should be, shouldn't be any gas in the carburetor. But as you see, it's not cranking bad, but I just think it should be cranking a little faster, and sometimes it's hard to start. And you hear that squeaking sound too. That means it's a dry bearing in that starter, so we're going to take it apart here and clean it up and reseat the brushes in it. Basically, all you got to do is take this plastic guard off here. It's got two screws to hold it in, and it comes off. And you got two half inch bolts to hold the starter on, and a 7 16 nut that holds the wire on. So I'm going to go ahead and take the starter off off camera and we'll look at it on the bench. Okay, here's the starter. A little tip, when you take that wire off, put that nut back on there so you won't lose it. And the gear is not too bad, I've seen a lot worse than this. But since the top part's wore off, that makes it harder for the gear to engage. So we'll go ahead and replace that. And there's supposed to be a spring on there to swing that back down, so I'll try to, try to find one to put on it. It's supposed to have a spring like this one has. This one needs old, but that's the way it's supposed to be. And like I said, what I'm going to be doing is replacing the gear, hopefully finding a spring for this, and reseating the brushes and greasing the bearings in it. First thing I'm going to do is take this roll pin out here that holds the assembly on the top, and go ahead and get this off of it so it'll be out of the way. All you need to do this is an eighth inch roll pin punch, and put it on there like this and pound it up. It's starting to move. I'm going to spray it down with penetrating oil here and I'll get right back to you after I drive that out. It just pounds that and you get out of the way then I'll, I'll show you taking this assembly off. Okay, so, so here's the pin that pounded out of it. You got this piece that comes off. You can see how it's you got that mark at the top where the pin goes. And you just wheel your gear off here. So that's got an awful lot of play in it like this. Here's the old gear, and like I said, I'm gonna put a new one on it. And this here, I'll just slide right off the shaft here. And how this works, there's a flat spot on both sides. And when you go to put that back on, you turn it and it locks in on the shaft like that. A lot of times, this part will wear out this plastic here. This one looks pretty good. I figure it plays in the gear itself. So, next thing we gotta do is take out the two bolts that run all the way through the length of the starter. These two bolts here, they're 5 16 drive, so I'm going to go ahead and get these out off camera. Okay, now we just take these two long bolts out completely. Now, this is uh, where you want to pay attention to the video because everything is going to fall apart from this point on. And I'll show you how to put it back together. Just pop this cap off. Watch your eyes, it's possible for a brush or a spring to shoot out. Ain't never had that happen, that's usually what happens. Then, you can take this housing off. You gotta watch the magnets inside there. Pretty strong pull on it. And you gotta wash it right there, it came out of it. This is your armature here and your commutator. We'll be cleaning this up too while we're in there. Now if your brushes are wore out or one of the holders is broke, you can buy or your bearings bad, you can buy this whole cap as assembly for like fourteen dollars or something like that. And I got another video, I'll put it in right here on uh, just replacing this. You might have, uh, you might want to watch that. Uh, 
But for right now, what I'm going to do is file the brushes flat. Because if you look at it, see how the brush has that curve to it? Right here where the rides on the armature. I'm going to make all of them flat. And see these, I think the the uh, uh, the tolerance on these brushes is a quarter inch. Is what I'm wanting to say, but I'm not 100% sure on that. In other words, if the brush is shorter than a quarter inch, they need to be replaced. And this is pretty close, especially after the time I file them down. But uh, I think we'll be all right for now because uh, there's still quite a bit left. And as you can see, there's still pretty good uh, spring tension on there. So I don't see a problem with doing this in one that's uh, about like that, yeah, as long as you're not less than a quarter inch. And if you have like an electronic cleaner or something, spray this whole thing down with it. That way you get all that dirt, dirt out of it. I'm going to try a carburetor cleaner. Kind of an experiment. I ain't never tried that on one of these, but I'm going to see how it does. I don't think it should bother anything. I'll clean it up here and get right back to you on filing the brushes. I'm only going to file one of them on camera to speed up the video. I'm getting tired of making real long videos, and I fear you all are too. So I'm going to try to make videos as short as possible from now on. Yeah, it looks a little bit better after spraying it down with the carb cleaner. It didn't seem to bother or anything, so I assume that's safe to do. <laughs> All you got to do is take a brush like this and just file it flat. It don't take much, but this is a very soft material what to make these brushes out of. It's almost like a grass light. I'm not really 100% sure what to use on there. If you just want to file them so they're flat like this compared to this and you don't want to go crazy you want to just do a little bit to do that then when you run the starter a little reseat in it'll be just like a new set of brushes almost in it so that's a very good trick when uh, freshening up a starter <laughs> okay so here's a before of the commutator you know do what it looks like what I'm going to do is take some sandpaper here I showed this in another video wrap it around here like this get a real good get a real good grip on there so just turn that in there a little bit I'm using 150 grit sandpaper uh, finer the better really a 220 have been perfect pretty much you can see it's looking better already and all this does is get rid of any uh, corrosion and pitted places or anything whatever it could be making the brushes not run smooth on there that, that's pretty much good enough and after you do this take a pick or a screwdriver and get in here and clean out any dirt that's inside there and be careful not to scratch the uh, plate there contact because you do that and you gotta re-sand it <laughs> and the only purpose of doing this is to get out any particles that may be in there a little screwdriver works pretty good too, but I just thought I'd try this pick and it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, anyway, you just do this on all of them and it's pretty much ready to put back together after you grease the bearings. Okay, now at this point it's pretty much ready to go back together. This is your upper bearing here and I'm just going to wipe that out a little bit. I see like a little bit of oil on there. And your bottom bearings in this right here. And all you got to do is use some type of grease. It's not critical what type of grease you're using on it, to be honest with you. I'm just using a wheel bearing grease because I know that will last a good long time in this. Just put some all over this, like this. That's really all you need. By the time you get this uh, top plate on here, it'll, half of it will smear out. And you can feel it kind of work in and turn it real free so you know it should be good enough and don't worry about the excess grease in there on the bottom side yeah but not on this top piece now the fun part is putting this uh, housing back on there because the magnets always want to grab and pull that back out and if you can kind of you gotta watch your fingers too because it'll pinch you but if you kind of hold it like this slide right on you gotta pay attention to that notch right here too that's about where it's going to be. Now the next thing we got to do, we got to tie all the brushes up. I'm going to do this off camera and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, so I got them all tied. You can see that's kind of pretty much the same way the factory does it. 
if you buy a new end cap, it'll have a wire in there like that, it's very similar to that. So now we're ready to put it back together and just hope that nothing flies out while you're doing it. These things can be very aggravating. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a little, a little bit of grease right here. You don't want a whole lot on this side. You can get down there on the commutator and the brushes and you don't want that. So just put a little bit in there, that's all you need. They should be nice if they came with like an oiler, kind of like an electric motor has. But, oh well. So now you just got to line up everything and hope for the best. And that's the way they should go on, just like that. And you go ahead and get your bolt started. Then you can you can kind of twist this whole thing, get everything lined up. But you want to go ahead and get them bolts in there before something decides to move. <laughs> That went really easy. That's the easiest I've ever had one go on. Most of the time you gotta sit there for about 15, 20 minutes fighting them brushes. <laughs> that actually went on the way it should. Let me get these tightened up, then we'll pull that out. Okay, I'm just gonna take some needle news here and pull it out. And you can kind of hear the brushes come loose in there and come up against you. You can hear that, you know it's working. Another thing, we'll have to break the starter in after before I put it on the motor. And I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, here's the difference between a new gear and an old gear. You notice this one says this side up. Because the back side, the gears are just flat. And this goes in there so it goes up inside the flywheel, grabs the hold real good. You gotta make sure you put it on right. Okay, like I said earlier, this has like a notch that goes on there and grabs the hold. And then you can just take your gear and kind of just turn it on there like that. I can't find a spring, so right now I'm going to put it back together like it was. I'll try to, next time I order parts, I'll order one and put it in there. I probably won't show that on a video or anything. And then you get your pin here, line it up, and pound it back in just like you took it out. I'm going to do this off camera and we'll get right back to you here in a minute after I get that pin is pounded in there and we'll break the starter in and put it on there and see how it starts okay guys I got that put back in there and like I said I'm missing the spring here I'll try to get one for it as soon as I can here uh, now I'll go ahead and break the starter in all I do is put it on a battery charger or you can use a like a jump start or something to do it as long as it's pretty high amperage and just hook it up and let it run for a while if this one does like the last one I rebuilt It'll uh, run real fast for a while, then it'll slow down and come back up to speed. But we'll see how this one does. But that's pretty much all. All you need to do is just let it run for a little bit like that. That gets everything seated in. All right, guys, let's put in the starter back on. You just get. Two bolts go in the block and you get that guard. I'm gonna put that on afterwards. So let's see how it does. I got the jump start charge back up, so it should be a real good start. It ain't really cranking any faster, but it sounds better. It's not squeaking now, it needed to be done anyway. Uh, but uh, hopefully, that'll make the starter last a lot longer. So. Well guys, I guess that's about it. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So uh, thanks for watching.